Hey, it's Dave Conklin, and I'm so excited that you stopped by this webinar. Um, this is called Increase Profits Through Microsites. Uh, my name is Dave Conklin. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since uh, early 2000, late 90s even. Uh, I'm also a consultant and speaker. I work with companies all over the globe, typically directly with C-level executives in the marketing world, uh, as well as chief executive officers. Um, really quick, kind of to give you a super fast overview of some of the stuff we've done over the past 18 years. Uh, this is a company, it's a manufacturing company in Houston that we helped to create a new brand for to market into a specific industry that they wanted to target. They really wanted to target the chemical and the oil refinery world uh, with their existing company, but they needed a brand online that really spoke to that. So same company, just a different brand. This is a company called TechStream. We helped them to uh, get leads in the world of uh, people who used this technology called Splunk, uh, which is a very unique niche thing, but they were targeting CIOs, CFOs, things like that. And uh, we were able to do that. Uh, Performance Waste Solutions is a company that does waste management brokerage inside of uh, the U.S. And we helped them to build their stuff out. This is e-commerce. We took a company that sold direct to consumer on an individual basis and created a brand that was more focused on selling in bulk and wholesale. This is an example of a client uh, that actually wanted to spin off a whole separate uh, kind of group of products uh, in the log cabin space. And uh, they built an entirely new brand with that. This is an example of a company that is in the uh, commercial and industrial construction space. And we helped them to build an online brand. Uh, this is Landcore Engineers B2B. They're looking to market to architects and things. This is a direct-to-consumer real estate company. Uh, so the reason I'm showing you all these, these are all different clients that we've helped in many different ways. And over the past 18 years, I have sat in so many companies, uh, you know, planning offices and rooms where we just sat down and strategized about things. And what I'm so excited to talk to you about directly is how a lot of the things I've learned and a lot of the things that are working for companies like these, how we can utilize them in your business. So I'm really excited about that. And I want you to chew on a couple of these quotes. Ronald Osborne said, unless you try to do something beyond what you've already mastered, you will never grow. And that is especially so true in the digital marketing space. It's scary right now being a leader, being an executive in digital, when there's all this change with digital marketing, because it's not just marketing anymore. The way that our employees and staff and vendors communicate are through these digital marketing channels. The way that our potential custom our potential customers are communicating with each other, it's through these digital marketing channels. All this stuff is just different ways of communicating. And the problem is that we, from a tactical perspective, don't always understand what that means for our business. And I'm going to help you to kind of explore that today. Sir William Bragg said, the important thing in science is not so much to obtain new facts as to discover new ways of thinking about them. What I want to do today is show you how you could, how, to, how to think about all these different things that people are currently doing. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a B2B company and you sell direct to businesses. It doesn't matter if you have an e-commerce company, if you're in the B2C world where you're going direct to consumer, or if you just want to generate leads. We're going to cover stuff that's absolutely amazing for anyone in any of those situations. And this is for you if you're a marketing leader, a business leader. Or, or anyone, but I, I want to talk for just a second about this communication gap that's taking place and getting bigger and bigger and bigger that I'm seeing in these two divisions or departments within an organization. So you've got the marketing team, you've got the leadership team. And the marketing team's getting all excited about things like engagement on videos or, wow, we were in this Facebook ad and we got this many likes. And the business owner goes, hold on a minute. I can't deposit those likes or this engagement that you're talking about into our bank account. And they're getting really frustrated. But the marketing team doesn't know how to always communicate to the business owner exactly what's actually happening to show them how it's going to eventually turn into revenue. 
But the problem is they don't know how to even prove that that's going to happen. So we're going to talk about all of that specifically today in this training. So marketing spend, in my opinion, should equal money. There should never be a case where you're paying for traffic and you can't tell exactly where that money is going. And I'm talking, I don't care if you have a six month sales cycle, you should be able to track every penny you spend back to a specific ROI. And again, we're going to show you how all that works today. So I've been in boardrooms all over the country and CEO leadership speaking events where companies come up to me and they say, look, we're having this challenge because you know, we've spent all this money on ABC and we got ripped off or, you know, we did, you know, this, that and the other thing. So what happens is they don't do it anymore. They just pull the plug rather than getting someone who truly understands how this all works. They just pull the plug in the whole deal. This happens over and over and over. And I'm not just talking about small businesses. This is $20 million companies, $100 million companies, nice medium sized companies that are operating in this uh, arena where because something didn't work and they tried it once or twice or they hired their neighbor kid down the street to do something um, you know they just kind of throw in the towel and that's just not okay because the reality is that you're missing a ton of revenue so did you know that on YouTube for example you can actually target specific individuals you can upload a customer list that you have you can upload a list of potential customers that you that you have and you can specifically target those individuals like specifically so when they're on YouTube they're seeing your videos play you can make a video specifically to to certain audiences that you've given a proposal to or something like that and you can have YouTube videos actually play just to those people you can also have videos play on your competitors YouTube channels this is a huge opportunity then there's Gmail. Did you know that 50% of the web is actually on Gmail? So 50% of the web is on Gmail. You can target people that have visited your site with a Gmail ad. It, it's amazing. With display, you can target people that are on specific websites that are looking at information about a specific topic. On Facebook, you can select people that are in market for certain products and services. On LinkedIn, you can target people that work in a specific department with a specific job title at a specific company of a certain size. You can literally break it down and create targeting campaigns. And the retargeting stuff that you can do today is absolutely amazing. And these light bulbs are going to fly for you in just a few minutes when you learn all of the opportunity that is out here. Now, I want to make sure I'm very clear. Today, I want you to understand the chaos of these communication channels. The reality is that things have changed so quickly. They have just spun out of control in terms of change. It used to be that in the late 90s, 80s, we could send a sales rep out on the street to knock on doors and visit people, and all of a sudden sales would happen. Or we'd cold call and create appointments, and then we knew that so many appointments would result in a sale. If you knew your numbers, you could literally predict growth. And today the problem is that people are not responding to that as well. And now they're, the marketing has changed from this thing where, oh, I put an ad in the newspaper and I get phone calls. And now it's turned into this craziness of you've got to be communicating people where they are, you know, through all these different channels. Nobody opens up the phone book anymore. A lot less people are reading magazines. And now you have to get the eyeballs in a whole different way. But now it takes technical expertise. So what I'm going to go over today is how about 15 different companies are making millions of dollars in additional revenue and how you can too. So let me introduce myself first off. So this is my family. Uh, yes, I have two sets of twins. No, twins do not run in my family. Yes, they are. Each set is identical. And no, we weren't on fertility medications. Uh, this is a picture of my boys. We're in the Dominican Republic here. And we're doing a water project. We love to do magic. And that's how we kind of communicate with a lot of the people that we don't know how to uh, speak to because of the language barrier and things like that. Uh, on the left here, that's my daughter, Emily. She's a marketing rock star. Uh, she was my, we'll call it an apprentice for a while. 
um, did a bang up job. And she then was actually recruited by a, a college at Liberty University in Virginia. And she is on their marketing team. Now they're managing millions of dollars in ad spend and whatnot. On the right, that real tall guy there, uh, that's actually Josh. And he's one of my partners here at Conklin Media. And it's funny because I'm to the left of him there. And he is six foot seven and athletic and thin. And I am five foot six and not athletic and not thin. Um, so we make a, a, an interesting bunch. I always introduce him as my son whenever we go anywhere. So this is my other daughter, Haley. Haley is currently in the military. Uh, she's in the Air Force. She's a medic, and I'm super proud of her. And my awesome wife, who's in that picture above, uh, she's a entrepreneur in her own right and helps out with HR stuff and things like that. She keeps all of our employees here at Conklin Media happy. So that's me personally. Um, and then let me tell you about my business story real quick. So what's really cool is I don't have a marketing degree. Like I didn't go to school for marketing and then get out and, you know, walk into businesses and say like, you know, Hey, here's how you do things. Um, my career actually started in real estate and in real estate, man, you don't get paid unless you sell a house and sit at that settlement table. That's when you get your check. So I cold called like crazy. I'm going to tell you that story in a little bit, but I cold called so much and we grew our business so quickly that we actually won awards and I got to speak to national audiences on motivating younger real estate agents and, and how to use technology to grow business and all this kind of stuff because we kind of just started playing around and doing stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you the story in a little bit about how we generated literally millions of leads for 10,000 plus agents all across the country uh, using this website called Get My Homes Value that we had back in the day. We had about 60 employees. We were in Inc. 500. But we grew this business out of necessity and had to learn how to do all this stuff, the social media stuff. We were doing podcasting before there was podcasting. We were doing SEO and PPC before those were really called SEO and PPC. Uh, it was just crazy. We won all kinds of awards and had a lot of success. But uh, we grew it so fast, actually, we were in Inc. Magazine. But the market changed, as you know, in the real estate world in uh, you know, 07, 08. And so what we did is we pivoted much of our team over to a marketing agency. And we started using all the techniques that we learned to grow our own business and that we used to help grow these real estate agents' businesses in their local markets. And we ended up using that to grow a bunch of other companies. And I spoke at events all over the country. There's me with Seth Godin. Um, and it was just a great, great, great time. So in 2014, I sold my interest in my agency. And I was doing some private consulting projects. We actually, uh, through a company called Income Store, we actually helped about 800 different people to invest between you know, $100,000 and $300,000 typically in uh, websites that generated passive income through advertising revenue, through lead generation, through things like that. And that's a big part of what I do today. Um, but I really missed the agency world. I just love the marketing agency concept. I love... I get passionate about walking into a business, analyzing it, and helping them grow. Um, so we don't really call Conklin Media an agency. Um, we, we like to call it a business growth company, a business growth consultancy, because that's what we do. Uh, we go in and we use these tactics to help companies to grow. But So how did this microsite thing come to be that we're going to talk about and learn about today while we're learning about all these tactics that we can help to grow our business? So I was cold calling, as I said, in the real estate world. I literally went around and found all these houses uh, that were really in really expensive housing developments, uh, subdivisions. And I wrote down the street names because we had this blue phone book back in the 90s that you could open up and it would sort everything by zip code and then by street name. And I could open it up to a street name and see every single house on that street. So what I would do is I knew I was calling these expensive houses and it's a commission thing. So the more house sells for, the more money you make. So I'd go through and I'd call every single one of them and be like, hey, my name's Dave. I work in your area. I really want to uh, grow my real estate business right now. So I'm just calling everybody in your neighborhood today to see if they're looking to make a move in the ne next six months or so. So if you don't mind me asking, are you looking to make a move in the next six months? And I get hung up on and everything else. But I learned that about every 200 phone calls I made would result in a sale or, or a listing appointment, I should say. And I would close almost every listing appointment. And in that market, almost every listing would close. It was just amazing. But I learned cold calling. That's, that's my roots. And But I got frustrated because what happened was the ups and downs of cold calling. So if you're cold calling, cold calling, cold calling, and you're getting all this business, it's great. But then once you have the clients, you can't cold call anymore. 
So if cold calling is your only stream of new business, you go up and down and up and down. So I'm like, I need to build a website. I'm going to make, a, I had no idea how to do a website, but I'm like, I'm going to go make a website for me and the guys that I work with in my real estate office. And when I put that website online, it's going to be awesome. And all these people are going to call us. So I went and sat at my computer and I built this sucker. Now, don't judge me. Be nice because this is in the early 2000s when this was built. And um, it's really, really, really bad. And nobody called us. And I didn't know why. But do you know why? This actually didn't look too bad, just for the record, in, in that time. But the reason nobody called is because there was no reason for them to call. Thank you for visiting with us. What the heck does that even mean? Like, it's, it's amazing to me what we learned. So we went and I'm like, okay, what do people want? Why would they call? And I thought, well, most people that want to sell their house, one of the primary things they want to know is what is their house actually worth? Because if they don't know what their house is worth, then they can't make a decision on what they're going to buy or where they're going to move. So what we did is we created this site, and it's it's the one on the right there. I also showed it to you earlier called Get My Homes Value. And we built a website that was strictly online to tell people what their house was worth. The leads would come in. And we would end up closing them. But what happened is we ended up generating leads all over the country. So we're like, what the heck do we do with all these leads? Because I only have an, a, a, you know, a real estate license in the state of Pennsylvania. I can't sell these leads that are coming in in Texas and Staten Island and all over the place. So what we did is we started calling agents and saying, hey, you want to partner with us? You want to buy these leads? And we ended up building a company with this microsite that had nothing to do with our core business. And that's when the light bulb went off. So this is almost 18 years ago, maybe maybe 15 years ago, when this really hit. And it was like, oh my gosh, you can use websites to create completely new revenue streams or break into new markets or market in a specific way. Nobody would fill out this information on our actual company website because they were afraid we were going to call them. But because this is a, a site where you put in your information, you get a free you know, uh, market analysis on your house, people would fill this information out and then we would call to get more info and see how we could help them out. It was absolutely amazing. Now, you got to understand this statement. This is huge. A properly designed and developed microsite will be your best employee. It will generate leads. It will generate calls. It will increase your branding. It will increase your credibility if you do this right. Now, what is a microsite really? So a microsite can be a lot of things, but every single time it's a collection of marketing tactics and content that's designed for a specific avatar. Now, I don't mean the movie avatar. That's not what I'm talking about. What I mean by an avatar is an individual that has a specific need. Now, I'm going to come back to this sheet in just a second, but I want you to understand that a dad in Canada looking for a Ford truck is different than a dad looking for a family sedan. So while both of those cases involve a dad buying a car, one is buying a Ford truck, one wants to buy a sedan. They're two completely different types of avatars. So in your business, I can all, I've never sat in a business actually who didn't have a bunch of different avatars. You have different job titles. If you're in the B2B world, there are different job titles that buy something. So if you help companies to save money with your products, a CFO might be interested because he wants to save money, but a CTO or a CIO might be interested because it's going to save them time. So there's different desires and goals and you have to break all of this stuff down. This is whether you're in B2C, it's, it's wherever you are. And the biggest thing is, this microsite concept is geared to that specific avatar. So if I have a product that's for both CFOs and CIOs, I'm probably going to have a different collection of marketing tactics and content for each of those. So I'll have one group of tactics and content for the marketing people, and I'll have one group of tactics and content geared toward the CFO. So this is a great sheet done by Digital Marketer, and you can uh, download one of these, we, just email us or whatever, we'll send you one. But this helps you to break down all of the different information on who your avatar actually is. So give this to your team, fill it out yourself, whatever, but have a specific avatar. It's the first step in all of this 
process. So, and if you have any questions, just feel free to, uh, you can put them in the comments or chat or, or whatever, depending on where you're listening to this right now. So today you're going to learn how your organization can build and manage these microsites and actually start generating leads, calls, and more revenue. And this is important. This is trackable leads, trackable phone calls, trackable revenue. You'll know it's coming from this microsite solution. And that's what's really, really important. So what's your avatar? Something I really want you to think about. I want you to think about what is one of your avatars. Now, let me give you a couple of examples of these microsites in all different types of ways. So Kuka Robotics had this revolutionary product that they were launching. It, they make ro the robot arms that are in the BMW factories and things. And for the first time ever in the history of these robot arms, they were going to have the software and the hardware integrated into one unit. And it was truly revolutionary for their industry. And they were spending tons of money on this trade show that they were doing, and they wanted to generate buzz. The challenge was that they had called other products that they had launched revolutionary before. So they wanted this to really stand out. So we built this group of content. Remember, a microsite is content mixed with marketing tactics. We built content and videos and all of this stuff to really build this up. We made it look like, okay, now since these robots have uh, software in them, they're smart. So what we did is we took one of the business leaders at KUKA, and he was really well known within the industry we were marketing to, our avatar. And we made it look like the robot got smart and actually kidnapped him. And there was fog and, and the video was cutting out and, and, and there was a series of videos and one video led into the other. And we had this, this email list that they were subscribing to get notifications. And then it ended up being one of the greatest trade shows that they have ever done with more buzz, more people stopping by. The talk was just in crazy. They were the talk of that particular trade show. So in this case, they wanted to increase event attendance. And we happened to have a list, an email list of people that were going to be attending the show. So we used that as an email list and emailed everyone with can spam compliant emails, uh, sending them to this, this page that was specifically about, you know, nothing but uh, that particular event. Here's another example. This is where a search engine optimization comes into play. So you may or may not know your business is made up of all of these small themes to Google and most likely. And if you rip out some of those small themes, for example, an accountant's website might, they might talk about, you know, some kind of uh, lease capitalization in one section, or they might talk about uh, income taxes or something in another section, or there's all kinds of different things that, you know, they might be discussing. So Google sees each of these as kind of a theme. So one thing you can do is you can create a specific site that's just about one of those themes like End to Growth did. Now, End to Growth, we built this, this microsite out uh, for top executive search firms and that whole topic. And we profiled all these executive search firms and things and created an algorithm and, and ranked them and, and everything. And that site right now today, if you go Google top executive search firms, as of this recording anyway, it's at the top for thousands of keywords in Google that the end to growth website could have never ranked for because that's their corporate site that's about their business and things. Yes, they're an executive search firm, but Google's never going to rank or seldom will rank a website, a company website for a term like, you know, best executive search firms because they want to do review sites and things like that. So what we did is we created this microsite. We, we gave badges out and stuff like that. But here's what's amazing. Listen very carefully to this. We pixel. We're going to talk about pixeling in a couple slides. We pixel every person that comes to top executive search firms so that they can then be remarketed to. So we can basically get this audience that we build in Facebook and Google and things like that. And then we can actually market end to growth to those people because we know that they're currently interested in an executive search firm. So it's an absolutely genius way to get organic search traffic to a site, build an audience up of people that we know are interested in the topic, and then we can market directly to those individuals through display ads, through YouTube videos, through Gmail, through uh, search engine, uh, like pay-per-click ads, through Facebook, all of those different things. So this is an amazing story. So then we have TechStream. With TechStream, we did a cold email campaign for TechStream. 
they have a product that uh, it, it's this stuff called it, it's called Splunk is is what it's called. So Splunk is a two billion dollar company. They have a really expensive expensive enterprise level server monitoring you know solution, and it's known for being super expensive and really difficult. So they came up with this idea of hey let's make a website and a, create a product where we can actually install this for free for people at no cost and we can uh, set it all up for them. So we'll, we'll install it for free and set it up. So that takes away those two concerns of it being expensive and it being challenging. And we emailed that to, uh, again, through a CanSpam compliant cold email, we emailed that to them and just absolutely blew it up. So in this case, we focused on a very specific product for uh, this particular client. So here's another example where, and I mentioned this one earlier, Law Valve of Texas, they wanted to get specifically into the chemical plants and oil refineries within Houston. So we created a site that geared content specifically toward those individuals, the chemical plants and the oil refineries. And we built content around that. We ran campaigns. So now when people visit there, they feel like they're at home. They feel like, okay, this company gets me. This company truly understands what it is that we're actually you know, trying to do and what we need. Um, and that's another great example. Wood Techs, uh, we just actually did a huge, uh, wonderful redesign project for them. And um, if you're in that world, uh, they're a great uh, person you can call and ask about us. But they wanted to uh, create a whole new brand with their cabin brand. And they used to sell these cabins on their actual Woodtex website. But they built an entirely new brand and they built an entirely new site. And now both of their sites rank really well, one for sheds and one for cabins. And it's been just incredible. Um, th this is another example with lead generation. There's a glass company who also does sunrooms. So we created a website, a super simple site, where we just generate leads for them for sunrooms. So people Google, you know, sunroom quote, they go to this page on their mobile phone, which is why it looks like that. And they go in and, and type in their information and uh, Garrity Glass calls them to give them their, their sunroom quote. There's another example in the e-commerce world where we have a company that does about $12 million in memory card sales um, on Amazon. And we wanted to create a bulk store. So we created a whole new site generated towards selling just memory cards in bulk. And it's worked extremely well. Um, they've done, now it's almost a million dollars in revenue uh, on their site just in the past 12 months, which is, you know, again, just really, really incredible. So microsites, though, are not for just the buying stage. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to make a microsite specifically to get new clients. And yeah, that's great. But they're also great for upselling and referrals. So the whole customer journey from stranger to referring client, that, that whole entire process, microsites are geared to everybody that fits in to all of those different stages of the process. Now, I want to share something with you that is really, I, I, I get super passionate about this. Currently, businesses are, they're so like focused on just leadership creates a product, sales sells the product, sales tells marketing what marketing collateral they need, marketing goes uh, and, and creates that marketing collateral, and then sales goes out and sells it, and then customer service has to deal with any you know challenges or problems. And I want to encourage you to look at your business a little differently. And this whole process speaks very loudly and clearly to that, but also to this kind of new buying process, um, th this customer journey that I just talked about in the last slide. So when you're designing your products or services, I want to encourage you to get, get engineering and marketing and sales and support and tech involved, and then use those people to create these awareness campaigns. So you're, these awareness campaigns are basically introducing your brand for the first time to strangers that have never heard about you before in their life. So you're introducing them. You're saying, hey, here we are. We exist. And then you're moving into this nurturing phase where once they know you exist, now you're creating content with your marketing, sales, and tech teams. And you're getting that content constantly in front of the people you've introduced yourself to. So you may have, for example, this would be a nurturing uh, webinar or training that we're doing. I'm not doing this just because 
I, I want to be nice. I mean, I hopefully will always do nice things and teach people stuff. But obviously, my hope is that a certain percentage of the people that watch this get excited about how we can actually integrate some of the stuff into their business. So that's my hope. You know, I want to provide so much value right now in this nurturing stage that you recognize, oh my gosh, these guys actually know what they're doing and they could change our business probably. That's how I want you to feel. But if I don't give you a lot of value, it's not going to be nurturing. It's going to be irritating. So that's why, you know, it's so important to think of it that way. Now, the awareness stage was, however, if, if, if you've never heard of us before, the awareness stage would have been when you heard about us. You may have seen a Facebook ad. You may have gotten a cold email. You may have received, uh, you know, a, a tweet. Uh, you may have gotten a cold call. Uh, you may have gotten a marketing piece in the mail. You may have saw a speak at a speaking event. Um, whatever it is, that's the awareness stage. And now we're nurturing you. And then the acquisition stage is, okay, once we've nurtured and you actually trust us and you know that we're not scam artists and things or you know with you with your potential clients, then comes the acquisition. So that's where sales and marketing and support and tech get together and figure out, okay, how do we get these people from the nurturing stage into this acquisition stage where they actually make a small purchase or you know something like that. And then on the support end, this is so huge for your support team, have your salespeople understand what's happening in support. Have the engineering people that are designing products and services, have them understand what people are hearing in support. If you're if you create a product, let's say you create a I don't know, a, a Bluetooth shower uh, speaker. And if you know for a fact that there's people complaining about your product because you have to unscrew something to link up your phone with the speaker or something, I don't know, um, you know for a fact that the next one you design, you could design without that screw and maybe come up with some alternatives to it or something like that. Like, But if you don't have your engineering department, your support department communicating with each other, nobody will ever know it. And this happens all the time. So throughout this flow, this customer journey of, you create a product, you make people aware of it, you nurture them, and there's a couple of stages in that nurturing process, and then you acquire them, you actually get them you know, um, to, to call you or to purchase something. You know, That whole process is so important to understand as we go through the rest of this. Now, in this awareness stage, once you start to nurture them, once they land on a landing page or they watch a video on Facebook or something, you can now retarget them with what's called a pixel to help them move through the rest of this process. And I want to talk about pixels for just a second because it's probably one of the most misunderstood things in digital marketing today. So the reason pixels and cookies are so important is because you can specifically communicate with people through these communication channels in a helpful way because if they were on your you know, in my case, if they were on my website design landing page, I can specifically communicate with them with website design related ads. If they were on a proposal page, reviewing a proposal, I know that they're pretty far along in the process and I can communicate with them with maybe ads that have testimonials or something so that they're seeing content out there with people talking favorably about our company and our brand. So what is a pixel? What is a cookie? So basically, uh, someone comes to your website or they open an email or something. When they do, a website pixel triggers a tracking cookie. And that tracking cookie is on your computer. And then when you go to third-party websites, which could be a social network, it could be a web page on the internet or whatever, they start to see offers from, from you. Uh, they start to see, you know, based on where they were at on your site or what they did or a video they watched. Then they go to, you know, they go to Facebook and there's information that they can grab on Facebook. And then when they return to your website, they see they can see a unique offer based on this content. And then visitors searching for your competitors and their keywords will actually see your ad more often. So there's that's kind of how the process works. Now, if you're wondering about the technicalities of what a pixel is, most people listening to this probably aren't, but you can pause this right here if you're able to pause it and just read through this and understand. The bottom line though is a pixel is on a website, a cookie is on your computer. And those two things communicate with each other to make all of these different things happen. But I wanna make sure I'm really clear. This is very different than someone comes to your website and they then you know, see an ad all over the internet 
for you know a product that they were looking at or something like that. This is so much more advanced than all of that. This is an actual uh, live track of one of the pages on one of our sites uh, where it's tracking pixels. Now, what's powerful about this, if you scroll down on this page, it actually shows you different events that we're tracking. So this is for a certain period of time um, over you know a couple of weeks. You'll notice that we had um, 202 people that added payment info, but only 97 of them actually purchased. So that tells us that there's a little over 100 people, about 105 people who were on our site, who added payment info, but never bought. We can target those people specifically, not only with ads to say, hey, you left stuff in your cart, but we can actually show them ads for the specific items that were in their cart. Let's say you have a lead generation page on your B2B you know, sales site. You can target people that hit a specific portion of your page but don't actually turn into a conversion. It's absolutely amazing the stuff that you can do. Now, down at the bottom here, we have another add to wish list. So these people added items to their wish list. That's huge too. Think about that. So there's just a lot that can be done with this stuff. Now, this is a typical customer value journey broken out in a little bit more detail than what we showed you before. So in this case, at the bottom under the awareness stage, you see the, pro the prospect, excuse me, they see an ad or they hear about you via a referral, something like that. And they come to your site. So they read a blog post, they engage in social media, they watch a video, they do something. So they've now been introduced to your brand. Hello, here we are. Then they opt into some kind of gated content. Now that might mean that they request a quote, they uh, they do something very basic. You know, maybe they they grab a download, they give you their email for a download, something like that. Now in each of these steps, there's retargeting happening. So you can see these these dotted lines pointing back. So that's kind of representing you know some kind of retargeting that's that's taking place, right? So and this kind of can keep happening over and over and over and over again. You know, you can keep retargeting people in different ways. So once they opt in for some content, now they actually convert, which means they make a small purchase, they schedule a demo, something like that. And then they get some value. They, they love that transaction. So they like really got pumped up about some, some stuff and, and their game. So then we start to climb this ascension ladder. So you sell them your core offer, your core business offering, you know, then you do an upsell, then another upsell, then another upsell. If you keep impressing them and helping them, or giving them enjoyment or satisfaction each step of the way, this, this ascension ladder will happen. And then they become a testimonial or case study. And then they actually become a successful customer. And they tell friends about your brand. So there's this is kind of a typical customer value journey that we can take people through using retargeting, pixeling, you know, cookies, all these different you know, things with your microsite. So this is an actual example. Now, this is really overwhelming. I get it. But you have to look at one of these arrows at a time. So this is an example of something we might do. This is actually one that's live. So this is a landing page on a very specific topic. When people get to that landing page, they can opt in to meet with someone. They can actually right online do a calendar invite. When they hit this landing page, they can also download a specific brochure that they get in their email. They can also, if they want, chat with us. Or they can call through a, a trackable phone number and set up an actual call. We then have direct mail that gets involved in this whole process. Now, how do we get people there? Well, we use display ads. So we use display ads. We use AdWords. So that's when people are typing stuff into to Google and things. We're going to go over all these in just a minute and kind of tell you all the possibilities. We're using cold email. We're using Instagram and LinkedIn, affiliate marketing. These are all the different things we're using to get traffic to the landing page. Tracking it all independently so we know what's working. We know what's not. We can turn off the stuff that isn't working, crank up the stuff that is, and create this fine-tuned machine that just creates constant leads coming in. So let's talk about Google Ads in a little bit more detail because most people think that Google Ads are just the when you Google something and you see the, the, the top listings that say ad, they think that that's what Google Ads are. Let me take a quick drink. So a lot of people look at that and they're just thinking about the text ads. But let me tell you about some other things in addition to the text ads. So first off, we have the GDN, the Google Display Network, which actually covers, ready, 80% of the internet. 80% of the internet. 
So it includes the sites like you see at the top here, like TechCrunch and Forbes and CNN and Fox News and Facebook and Better Homes and Gardens, ESPN, you know, all these different places. And you can communicate directly with people that are on these sites. Now, people used to think, oh, well, I don't want to target everyone that is on CNN. Oh, no. You can not only pick specific individuals, like, and I literally mean you can say, only show my ad, only show this ad to people that were on this page of my site, or only show my ad to people that match this behavior that they're currently in market for this type of product, or only show my ad on web pages that are about this topic. You can break this down so incredibly well and just do amazing things. You can also target just by geo, geographic area. You can target by age and gender. You can do behavioral, tar- like there's all this stuff that you can do throughout this display network, which covers again, 80% of the internet. You can hit them with text ads that are on, like embedded in those pages. You can also hit them with display ads and things that are right there. It's really powerful. So then we have text ads. So the text ads are where you can hit people through the Google search network, through keywords, by location, on specific devices. You can upload your current customers and say, hey, Google, these are my best customers. Create a list of people like these people and you know, just market to those. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. And this is so important because marketing teams don't know that half this stuff even exists. You can do remarketing, language targeting. You can, it's just amazing what you can do with AdWords. YouTube, so powerful. If you look on the right here, you can, you can specifically target people that have certain interest profiles. You can target people who watch ads. You can target people who visit specific YouTube channels or are on specific YouTube channels. You can only show your videos to people that have been on your website. You can only show people that have been on your website or on your YouTube channel for a certain period of time. So you can you know, only show the YouTube video to people that have been on your site five times. You can go after previous buyers and target them with video with, hey, we are so grateful that you're a customer. Uh, we would love for you to come on back and we can build campaigns similar to the one you're watching right now for you to target your past customers. Like you can do stuff like that. Um, on the, the content side, you can specifically pick topics and only have YouTube ads. And by the way, these YouTube ads, they're either videos that play before another video where you get five seconds of time to talk before they can hit the skip button, or they can be text ads that appear while they're watching videos. So either one. So you can target videos that have certain search words in them, certain videos, all that kind of stuff. And then you can also target on YouTube by zip code, language, and device. So if you only have clients in Fremont, California, you can absolutely make that happen. And this is all through Google Ads. Then there's Gmail. In Gmail, <coughs> you can actually target people specifically that have been on your site and make an ad show up inside of their Gmail account. Um, when they click on it, they see an ad and can be extremely, extremely effective. Most people are not using Gmail ads. And then there's retargeting. On the retargeting side, um, this is where you can basically either upload a list or you can pick people that hit certain pages on your site. You create all these custom audiences inside of Google Analytics, and then you can actually retarget those people as well. Now, in the Wall Street Journal, um, they even have retargeting ads that are running. So this is, I was actually on, I was in Canada at the time, and I was on Wall Street Journal. And you can see here, they were hitting me with a business marketing uh, degree at a business school and getting paid uh, on time by your customers just got easier from Dun & Bradstreet. Both, um, I, I've, both are relevant to me in, in some way. So I'm being retargeted probably here based on behavior and here because I was on the Dun & Bradstreet website. So they're retargeting me and, and building you know, an, an audience with me um, or I'm included within their audience, excuse me. So then there's Facebook ads. Facebook ads are huge. Now, I hear it all the time. Facebook won't work for me because I sell in the B2B world or I sell to manufacturers and they're not on Facebook. My buyers aren't on Facebook. Well, guess what? Using the tech that I'm teaching you today with by using pixels and all that, you're only targeting your ads to the people that have already been on your website or you're only paying for these ads from people who match a very specific targeting interest and actually click and engage with you. So if they're not there, it's not going to cost you anything. Like that's the one thing people have to understand. But I promise you they're there. 
there may not be as high as a percentage in a certain industry, but grandmas and grandpas are on Facebook now more than ever before. It's actually an older demographic now, um, much to Facebook's dismay, actually. Actually, but so let me talk to you about some of these ads. So first, there's newsfeed ads. So newsfeed ads. This is mobile on the right, desktop on the left, and then there's a column ad as well right here. Um, but these are ads that you can target a zillion different ways. You can say people that like you know strollers and uh, you know have a lot of money. Um, you know you can say show me show me people that like this topic and don't like this topic and have been on this website. Like there's so many things you can build here. You can also upload your actual customer list and create a lookalike audience, or you can upload a list of leads you've generated. So there's all these different ways that you can target people, but this is the awareness stage typically at, at the high level. So you're, rate, you're introducing yourself to people. So you can use videos, you can use all kinds of stuff. You could run a video ad on Facebook, and then for the people that watch more than say 50% of it, you can then target those people with another ad. Like, hey, it's time to have your GSS, your growth strategy session. That's one of the things that we do. So that's, you know, it's amazing what you can do there. Now, Instagram is also powered by Facebook. So these Instagram ads you can have come up where to people that have already been on your website. So that's a huge opportunity as well. Lead ads, this is one of the coolest things ever. You could say like, let's say you're a plumber. Like, hey, need a plumber? You know, click here. And then when they do, it auto fills their information into there. And then it'll actually text them after that and uh, with their permission, of course, uh, because it fills in their cell phone number. And you can actually begin a text conversation with them right on their phone where you deliver, you know, some kind of content to them like, hey, great, we're excited to come out, you know, give them some kind of a, an idea of what you're going to do and what the price is. And it's, it's just it's so amazing what you can do with these lead ads. It's absolutely incredible. So there's LinkedIn ads. On LinkedIn, look at this audience we built here. This is a real actual audience that we built. So we were targeting the US, we excluded some states. And then you can see on the right there, um, we were going after like director of operations, uh, director of finance, uh, you know, all those different things. Whoops. Um, and we were, you know, going through and creating that audience. And we wanted specifically people that were, you know, had 50 or more employees, which you can see here. And then in these specific industries. So we were being very specific, very targeted. We built 67,000 LinkedIn members, and that's who we specifically go after. And this is the ad that we ran. And basically, people can click there and see if they're overpaying on their waste services. It's a perfect, perfect way to do things. So during each of these stages, while we're building relationships with people, what kind of content should you actually put in front of your uh you know, potential audience? What, what kind of content should you allow your team to create? Um, well, that's, I'm going to go over that now. So basically, when someone's a stranger, blog content, different premium content, which might be this like really awesome infographics or calculators, um, different social publishing stuff that you're doing in general ads. So you're being very general kind of, you know, overview with with people when you're just kind of getting to know them. But once they interact with that stuff in some way, now you can start to go after them with checklists and cheat sheets, infographics, white papers, contests, because now they know your brand. You're not asking them to get married on the first date. You know, you were like, hey, here I am. Nice to meet you. And then next time it was OK. You know, let's do this course. You know, let's do this um, this advertisement. You know, let's let's do this thing. And then once they actually become a lead. Now you're going after like a trial, a demo, a consultation, some kind of an audit. Then they become a customer. Now it's all about delighting them. So you're sending them surveys, you're doing referral programs, you know, early release data, you know, different add-ons and all that kind of stuff so that they then become promoters of your brand. So you have to track pixel and tag every single thing. Google Analytics. Google Tag Manager and Facebook are all places where you go to build these different tracking mechanisms and that's where your stuff is being stored. Um, now again, this this we're not getting into the technical details of this because that's not what this is about, um, but you this is what you have your tech team basically do. And if they don't understand how to do this stuff, either find someone who does or send them to training and, and get them to, to, to learn how to do all this stuff. There's, resources all over the internet on, you know, all that kind of stuff. So when you track each step, 
you create these knobs and levers that you can you move and manipulate to create massive revenue very quickly. Let me give you a literal example of that. So this is a client. We did a, a two-day workshop with this client. Um, it's one of the things that we do. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But we actually go to clients' offices, uh, two of us from our team. We hang out uh, for a couple of days, ask all kinds of questions, build a whole strategic plan around you know all the stuff that we do. And um, you know it, it's just it, it's awesome. But this is an example of a, a product um, a company and what they already knew. So they knew that when they bought a database, they sent about 7 million letters that some of the people would visit their page, but they weren't tracking how many. And they knew that out of that, about 52,000 people would show up at a workshop every year. And they knew that about 85% of those would actually do an interview and 32 to 45% of those would close. 75% of those would not cancel and in the end, that basically meant that they were making about $10.2 million on this process um, here. So what we were able to do is using the tools and techniques of pixeling and tracking, we were able to add some steps into this and get some clarity on some numbers so that we had some levers to move. So we added these five items in. So now we were able to see that out of the 7 million letters, about 6.5% of those land on the page. About 61% of those go to this next page and enter this information in. 73% of those end up going to another page in the process. 57% of those go here. 45% of those do that. And that's where their numbers pick up. So now we knew that we had a process where we could try and do some things to tweak some of these numbers. So the first one we looked at was this because it's in the beginning of the process. So the more people we, or the more we can increase this number, the greater these numbers will increase. Not the percentages, but these numbers at the top. So we were able to make some changes in just a couple of days where we upped that number to 71%. And because we were tracking it, we knew, are these changes going to hurt or help? And when we did that, that literally, no exaggeration, took them from $10.2 million in this process to $11.9 million. Instantaneously, one change, boom. And it's just absolutely amazing what you can do when you're tracking properly and you have some brains that are actually on this and thinking about it. So this is an example of tracking. So uh, this is where we can actually see revenue that came from very specific sources. So you can see these different sources and the actual money that was made from it. This could be leads. It could be sales. You could have data pulling from your CRM system back into here that's tracking lifetime value. You can do anything with this stuff if you know what you're doing. And this is specific keyword phrases, how much is being spent and how much is being earned. So you can see in here, we spent $123,000 and we were able to make $458,000. Well, some of these are much more effective than others. So this one, oh, look, it's a remarketing campaign, by the way. This is retargeting. We only spent 220 bucks and made $72,000. That is a heck of a return, let me tell you. So it's absolutely amazing what you can do here. Now, some of you have challenges on the follow-up side. So you'll generate these leads for your sales team, but you don't have the confidence that they're actually going to follow up properly. So we work with some companies and some tools and some vendors where we actually automate follow-up through text, through voicemail drops, and through emails. So this is a system that we actually use where when a lead comes in, they quickly get an actual voicemail. And this is what it sounds like. Hi, it's Dr. Sheila Doby from Your Caring Dentist. I got your request on Facebook on your needs for a consult to look into the possibility of Invisalign. So this is a dentist in California. People are requesting a consultation for Invisalign. And they go through, they fill out the information, and then they immediately get a voicemail. Then they get a text message, then they get an email. Then the next day, they get another text message. The next day, they get a voicemail and an email. The next day, they get a text message. So this goes on for as long as you want it to go on for. But the powerful part about this is that these leads coming into your sales team, now your sales team still calls them, but this automates much of the process that takes place 
uh, and, and make sure that there's follow-up that's actually happening. So again, just knowing this stuff is out there is absolutely huge. Now let's talk about SEO for a minute. This is like the free clicks in Google. So somebody Googles you, how do you get your site to actually be at the top? Once you create this microsite or even on your corporate site, how do you make sure that your website is actually at the top of Google? And what we're gonna do to show you how this works, it's one of the cool, this is like one of my big light bulb moments, I get all excited. But we're gonna show you an example with the phrase click here. And I'm actually gonna leave the PowerPoint presentation and we're gonna jump over um, to uh, this screen. And you can see what I've done here is I've Googled the phrase click here. Now when I Google that phrase, the number eight listing is the application for a US passport page, which is right here. Now, what's interesting is if I do a command F and try to look for the phrase click here, that phrase is nowhere to be found on this page at all. Yet, out of, are you ready? 4.4 billion search results, 4.4 billion search results. That is, in Google's opinion, the number eight most relevant page about the phrase click here. Now understand technically what happened here. I typed in click here, I hit the enter button. My query for this series of letters and spaces went to Google. Google went into its database of billions of web pages and spit this list back at us saying, here are the most relevant pages for the phrase click here. And this is what it's showing us. So it's just looking at it like a series of letters and numbers. Now, why does Google rank this so high? Well, here's why. This is a list of web pages around the internet that have the phrase click here linking to this particular site, like this one. Here's how you get your child a passport. One, complete the US passport application. Click here to complete and create your child's US passport application form online. When I click this link, it goes to the very page that ranks for the phrase click here. So the, the moral here is to rank your site for specific keyword phrases that you know generate traffic. Let's say you've done it, and this is, a, this is a great way to do pay-per-click by the way. Let's say you've done a pay-per-click campaign. So you've bought a couple of keywords, you've sent that traffic, you see which ones actually turn into money for you. Now you know that you can go out and build links for that keyword phrase, get other web pages on the internet to link to you with that keyword phrase, and your site will rank higher in Google for that keyword. Now, it's not quite that simple, but it is on a fundamental level, that's exactly what you do. So a lot of people say to me, well, how do I find people? Let's say you were um, a furniture manufacturer. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna type in furniture manufacturing, into Google. Now, you'll notice I've got 347 million listings here. But look, look at, if, if I do this, if I type in in URL colon blog and furniture manufacturing, now I've got 702,000 blogs that specifically talk about, <coughs> excuse me, manufacturing. And those blogs I can contact and say, hey, can I write you a guest post? Or I can actually type in guest post because if a site has guest posts on it, then you know that they'll probably take one from you. So I just randomly for furniture manufacturing found all these different pages that accept content from guest people, from guest authors, and they'll write content. So that's what you have your team do. So it's a combination of making sure that the content on your actual website is strong and of high quality, and also you having links from other websites to yours. That's exactly how SEO works. That's how you rank stuff. So if you hire an SEO company and they tell you it's gonna cost you $800 a month, say, books, that's not right because it should cost a lot more than that. The reason for that is this takes time. You have to actually call people on the phone email them, reach out to them via Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and you have to interact with them and negotiate with them, then write content for them. This stuff isn't just, wham, there's a link on your site. Now, there are places that'll do that, and then your site will get banned by Google because you're trying to do 
things in an unethical way. And that's not good at all. So that I wanted to give you kind of a really quick overview of exactly how rankings work. And that's how it works. So going to the next slide here, there are a couple of tools that are so, so, so valuable. Now, none of these are our tools. So we see these prices. This this isn't us. This is this is these tools. But there's a couple of things you can do. I'm going to show you these real quick. Um, this is super powerful, major takeaway uh, for for you to, to play with here. So number one is look at SEM Rush. And what I want you to see here is you can do two things here. You can type in a website. So I could type in, um, let's do Riverwood Cabins. I can type in a website. You can type in your website here. And you can actually see specifically what keyword phrases your website is currently ranking for. And not only that, but you can also see which are your top pages and all those things. Now, here's what's really powerful. You can see your competitors and you can see what keywords they rank for. Even more valuable, you can see what keyword phrases they are actually paying for. So if I go to my main competitors, which is based on other sites that rank for the same keywords that yours does. If I go through this list and I see that some of these like deer run cabins, okay, or Yellowstone log homes. So let's do this one because 132 under paid keywords. Here are the 132 keyword phrases that Yellowstone log homes is paying money to rank for. Now we can not only see their ranking or what they're paying for, we can look at their ad. Yellowstone Log Homes in 1962. Come and see beautiful functional designs for cozy cabins, luxury lodges, professional design team, order online. And then I can also see what actual page they're sending this traffic to. So think about this. Put in your competitors in here. You can look at the ads that they're running for which keywords and the pages that they're actually sending the traffic to. This is the best competitive intelligence tool you'll ever see in your entire life. Now, if you type your site into here and you notice a severe dip, it is probably in, in traffic. It is probably because of the fact that there was a redesign done in your website. It's now dipped. And now you have this, you know, big uh, challenge because they didn't do things like 301 redirects and all this technical stuff when they redesigned your site. The marketing industry has turned into the medical industry in, in some ways. What I mean by that is it used to be with, if you had a problem with your ear or your foot, you would go to a doctor and talk to the doctor about it. Now you go to specialists for everything. The same thing is the case with this stuff. There are specialists that understand paid search. There are specialists that understand paid social. There are, we're going to go over all these in a few minutes, what the list of all these different talents are. But there's a lot of different talents, and that's where a great company that staffs up their team, they'll have different areas of expertise on their team that all come together to be able to do a lot of this wonderful, great stuff. And that's how you can, you know, kind of have it all syncing together. But this is so powerful. The other thing you can do here too, you can actually type in keyword phrases. And instead of assuming how many times people search for something, um, and I'm going to give you an example here. I'll use my home value example. So instead of assuming how many people are typing in home value, I can actually see that 27,000 people approximately per month are typing in the phrase home value. Now that's really, really, really powerful. Now notice that only 3,000 people are typing in house value. Well, that's house value estimate. So home value is 27,000. House value is... Ninety nine hundred. So a lot more people are typing in home value. Now, here's what's interesting. We found through our research that when someone types in house value, they're almost never talking about their own home because people refer to their home as their home, not their house generally. And it's been very interesting seeing conversion rates and things. So not only does the phrase house value get less search, but it also converts a lot less. And that's all data that you can know and you can find out. Now, if you pay for these keywords first, whatever keywords you find in here, and you pay for them so you are you know you're going to get traffic, it, think of it like an R&D budget where you're spending money to have those keyword phrases come to your site and you're checking which ones are going to convert, which ones are not going to convert. 
And it's, you know, super, super, super uh, valuable then um, to have that information. So when you do go to do this link building stuff and to rank your site organically, um, you know that you're going after keywords that will actually work really well. Now, the other thing you can do, you can actually type your sites into here. So I can type in riverwoodcabins.com into this search, and I can actually see all of the different people that link to me. Now, we're doing a uh, link building campaign for this site, and you can see the links here. That you know, It's like the stock market goes up and down. Um, but this is what we've been doing for this particular client over the past couple of months um, and building these links. Now, you can also see broken links. Broken links are web pages on your site. Fortunately, there are none on Riverwood that don't have a home. And almost all of the people listening to this, if you type your website into here, you'll see that you have broken links, uh, which is a really, really big uh, deal and big challenge. And when you fix them, you can often see huge increases uh, in your uh, rankings and whatnot. So it's really a huge thing to check those things out. Um, so those are the three main tools that we kind of use for SEO. So let's talk about conversion rate optimization. Now, these are some really cool tools that we're going to go over. Um, Hotjar is absolutely incredible. When you install Hotjar on your website, it actually, and I'm going to play this video, it actually records sessions on your site. So this is an actual recording of someone on our client's site interacting with it. We can see what people do and then what we can you can have your team put heat maps together um, that the, this service does for you and actually show you where people are traveling on the site. People tend to read with their mouse. So they, you know, when they're reading a certain area of a site or whatnot, they'll go there with their mouse and they'll kind of follow their mouse with their eyeballs. So you can kind of see where they're at. It works for mobile, it works for all these places. So this is an absolutely huge way when you launch a new page to see how the conversion rates are going to work. Then there's CallRail. CallRail will actually track all of the phone calls that come in to your business from a landing page, but it'll also show you, if you set it up properly, which keyword phrases generated those calls. So it used to be that you'd put a website up online run traffic to it, and you wouldn't actually understand specifically where these phone calls were coming from. You'd have no idea if they came from your sign outside or the newspaper or whatever. Now you can not only know that they came from a landing page, but you can also know specifically what keyword phrase or if they came from Facebook, you know exactly where they came from. So that's so, so, so important. Um, and you can see this also tracks uh, phone calls right here. Now we, we are tracking on this particular campaign, we are actually tracking... Um, the first time calls as well as additional calls because for us a first time call is a lot more important than a repetitive call that's coming in over and over and over again. Uh, we really care about those first time phone calls. So all this is great, but holy crap, most people look at me and they go, Dave, I don't have the team. Like who the heck do I hire? How do I even start to pull this off? This is just insanity, all this stuff that we're not currently doing. So these are the 12 different kind of disciplines or specialties, I guess is a good way to think of it, uh, that you need in order to pull something like this off. So one, you need a strategist. That's your quarterback. That's the person who understands conceptually how all this stuff works. They understand how to utilize it to grow a business. They they completely you know are, are experts at um, how to pull everything together into a smooth, well-oiled machine. And then under them, you have your SEO specialists. They're people who specifically focus on what we like to call digital PR. They're doing outreach. They're, they're going out to different people and, and you know, getting them to link to you and getting you talked about online, which increases your rankings. Uh, they also understand the technical part of SEO meta tags, title, like all that crazy stuff, re, you know, 301 redirects, blah, blah, blah. Then you have a content writer. Now, content writers, this is not like just the person down the street. You need a content writer who understands how to actually write content that converts, content that gets shared on social, all that kind of stuff. Then there's web designers, which are different than graphic designers. I have worked with some of the most amazing graphic designers who I feel are horrible web designers. I've worked with incredible web designers that can't design anything graphically. They're two completely different things. And the problem is 
that a lot of business owners look at their guy that's a graphic designer that's done labels for their products and they want them to do the website. And it's the worst decision in the world because there's so many nuances like page speed and, you know, technology and, you know, uh, all the all the image optimization, all this stuff that a normal graphic designer would never even consider. Then you have programmers. Programmers are the ones who know about a lot of the more technical aspects of a site. If you're designing tools or programs, things like that, like that's where that comes in. Social media specialists, those are people that understand how to build an audience on social, how to interact with your communities on social. If you, for example, create a specific Facebook group targeting, you know, CIOs uh, in a specific industry and, you know, this Facebook group, you invite them and it has, you know, specific people and content there that's really high value, blah, blah, blah. This social media specialist knows how to keep that community alive and how to get those people turning into, you know, actual revenue. Data analysts. So data analysts are people who look at all this crazy data, all this traffic that you're getting, and they can actually take that data and segment it and create real measurable, what we call CFO pretties out of it. So basically we can take that and say, here's this awesome thing, um, you know, that you need to understand or know. Then there's paid traffic specialists. So those are people who understand pay-per-click marketing, the, the YouTube stuff, all the stuff we talked about at the beginning, the Gmail things, the, the building audiences in Facebook and having ads run to them, the lead ads, all those things. They understand how to make all that happen. Um, then you have your social community manager. So those are the people specifically who make sure your community is, is positive. They work very closely with a social media specialist. Um, and basically, if you run, let's say you're running ads in Facebook, people can comment on those ads. So if you're going to have an ad that's showing up in front of, you know, 200,000 people and there are people saying negative things and stuff, you need someone there who's communicating directly and making sure that everything is, you know, 100% good to go. Then you've got link building and stuff. Again, they work closely with the SEO specialist, but they are specifically just focused on the link portion. Um, often link builders have no concept of the technical parts of SEO and things like that. And then you have your CRO specialist. That's conversion rate optimization specialist. And those people are always talking about using things like Visual Web Optimizer or Google Optimize to compare landing pages so that you can check and see which one converts better or worse and you know all those different things. So there's a couple of common challenges that people have, and I totally get this. Many companies just simply do not have the team members that have those skills. And just so you're aware, make sure you have in the back of your mind, our team can actually train your team. We have no issue at all with going out and hanging out with people and going through training programs and stuff. And if you'd like us to help you with that, we are more than helpful or more, excuse me, more than willing to talk to you about how we could make some of that happen. So there's another common challenge where people just don't know where to start. Like this is also overwhelming. They feel like they just don't have a starting point. They don't know where to go. Well, with many of our customers, and we have a bunch of testimonials from companies that have done this, um, we can actually go and spend two to three days on site with you doing an on site growth strategy session. Um, day one, we ask tons of questions. We take a tour. We meet some of your key players, things like that. And we just really get to know your team and what you're doing and what your objectives are. We get to know the tools that you're using, the current analytics setup, you know, how all this stuff is happening. And this isn't just digital, this is like your business. We, we get business here. So we go in and we just look at everything. Day two, we make re recommendations and we start talking about things and stuff. And then on day three, we actually have a full blown plan that we can implement. You can implement. You can take it, you know, with you, whatever you want to do. Um, so another common challenge is that you just don't have the bandwidth to do any of this. Like you don't have time for a growth strategy session. You know, you don't have time to train your team or to hire people or, you know, anything like that. And that's where our done for you stuff comes in. So we can actually build the entire process for you. So there's a couple of options that you can go from here. Um, and I want to break those down real quick. So we can have a phone growth strategy session, which is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you a penny. So if you feel like, you know, you're in a position where you want to start investing in some of this stuff, but you don't know where to start, uh, a great first step that's completely risk-free is to just have a call with us for about an hour. And we will go through what we can in an hour and learn about your business and really just talk about some really cool stuff that we might be able to do that we've seen other folks do. So uh, that second step there, um, currently right now, now this is going to be $15,000 
um, soon because they're becoming more and more popular. But we can do a three-day on-site growth strategy session. Um, now, whether it's two or three days, it's still $7,500 um, plus hotel and uh, travel for two people. Uh, but we will spend those days with your team and uh, it will be super valuable. And if you don't get value out of it, we'll give you all your money back, um, except the travel in the hotel. Um, but we will give you all of your money back. And, uh, you know, you know what? We'll actually give you the money back for the hotel and travel too. How's that? Uh, because we know for a fact that this session will be absolutely amazing. Um, and then you can hire us. So basically, uh, we can do a full build out based on your needs. Um, and $25,000 is generally kind of where that starting point is. Now it gets a lot more expensive than that. And there's some, you know, monthly, you know, uh, things like that. But if, if you're in a position where, um, you've got about $25,000 and, uh, you know, we would love to talk to you about specifically, you know, what we can do and how we can help. And, and that would be so, so, so exciting for us. Um, and that's kind of how we work. So, Here's the deal. Uh, if you have any questions, um, you know, you can basically, uh, you can comment, you can email us, uh, hello at conklinmedia.com is our email address. Uh, you can uh, reach out to us via phone at 717-951-8349. Uh, and, you know, you can also uh, just comment on wherever you're seeing this video or go to our website and contact us through there, through the chat or whatever. So, um, we are so thankful. I hope that you got a ton of value out of this. Um, it's super important to me that everything that we do be really filled with value. And we hope that you look at it the same way when you're building content for your audience. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Again, this is Dave Conklin uh, with Conklin Media. Thank you.